There's something strange on the bench near the swing. What the fuck? I thought I was done with this shit. Hello, down here. For you, it was probably been a week. For me, it was about five minutes, but laundry away. <laughs> so yes, I'm recording this literally like five minutes after I recorded the previous episode. Because I have the time to record. That's the main thing for me. If I, I need to have time to record. If not... So yeah, let's find out what the hell happened. By what her big secret is. In my room, many trophies of the edgiest years of my life. A gang flag labeled Bloodstained Angels hung up on my wall, embroidered in gold. A gang leader jacket with the name First Attack Squad Leader Tsubakiko Harumiya monogrammed right on it. My trusty partners from those days leaned against the walls. Warped metal baths with splatters of lacquer on them to make them look bloodstained. A chain borrowed from a broken bike. I always hurt my hand, so I never used it as a weapon. A wooden sword I bought on a middle school field trip used that one to teach countless misbehaving underclassmen a lesson. And all of them were precious mem memories of my innocent youth. I turned on the stereo, but the headphone jack must have been unplugged because loud music started blaring. Slaughter, 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 oh, shit, that TV is Don't tell me what to do, I'm playing to your bell, I don't take orders from you, not from you. Eventually switched the power off, silencing the heavy metal CD I'd been listening to last night. The band's poster hung up on the wall nearby. Thanks to them, I had a whole gallery displayed, displaying my Nephil Hobby from the skull with a pentagram on it to a creepy demon mask. I've meant to know I've never felt anything odd about the room I've lived in for so long. But this one do. Oh, oh, you're, you're the one that... I recognize this music. Is it? This is the same music that played in the second chapter, didn't it? <laughs> Up through middle school, I've been living a completely different life. When I was in grade school, my hatred of boys ran rampant to thanks to some bad influences in middle school. I became even worse. <laughs> my change was triggered when I heard Susan we would be moving here. The two of us played together when we were little, so the topic brought back vivid memories of my life before I strayed off the path. At that moment, I realized I couldn't live with the person I'd become, so I decided to turn over a new leaf once I entered high school. Cut ties with all that stuff, made a fresh start as an innocent young lady, and strove for my childhood dream to become the perfect wife once more. It had been a year since I started training to be a wife, aka helping out with chores. If they were teaching femininity, femin, femininity in school, then I'd just be finishing first grade. It took me until high school to start learning the things most girls learned in grade school at the earliest and middle school at the latest. <laughs> I 
yet I'm supposed to partake in a cooking contest against Jack of All Trades Minove and Miss Perfect Ria at that. And I had to stop calling Susan Moo by name if I lost. Did that mean I go Susan Moo to one of them too? <laughs> I flopped into the bed and closed my eyes. I should have been laughing at how silly it was, yet tears streamed down my cheeks. Okay. Suzumi was practicing in the backyard again. He would concentrate, practice his form, clear his mind, and punch a tree appendant. Appendant? That was his routine every single day. I found it odd at first, but my family and I had grown used to it by this point. Suzumi! Susan Moo lowered his hips and held the pose. It didn't look like much at first, but I can only imagine it took a lot of muscle strength to hold it that long. It was on something he was born able to do. He must have been he must have become second nature. It must have become second nature to him after years and years of training. いつから修行してるのいつから修行してるのいつから修行してるのうん。もちろん、年相応な内容だったけれどね。なるほどね。ズムの強さは一朝一夕じゃないわけだね。the same could be said for cooking or being a lady. Any kind of skill takes constant effort. There were no shortcuts in this world. I tried acting like a dainty flower on the surface. But on the inside, I was still the same rabid beast. Normal girl. Most people would probably take those words at face value. Those words weighed heavily on me, having only started living a normal life a year ago. For me, a normal girl was defined by the number of years she lived a normal life. And such a didn't even qualify as well. その理想と違う普通にいたらない子が告白してきたらどうする普通にいたらない子ってどういう意味えっとつまりうんごめんね今の質問なし フォーゲットフォーゲットでうんキコちゃんは異性と付き合ったことってあるえな、ないよ全然ない一度もない僕もないよだから経験も修行もゼロなんだ人を愛して結ばれてそして幸せになるのにも技量がいるんじゃないかなって思うことがあるんだ人を愛する技量って変な言い方友達同士だってさ気遣いってあるよねだからいつまでも仲良くいられる親しい仲だからってそれにあぐらをかいてたら喧
だから僕たちはたくさんの友達と交流してそれを学んできたんじゃないかなそれと恋人同士も同じだっていうわけうんだから僕はもし女の子に告白を受けたら付き合ってみたいなって思うそうすることでお互い恋の育み方が学べると思うし人間も深まると思うんだひょっとしたら相性が合わなくて別れてしまうこともあるかもしれないけど2人はとても大切な経験を得て次につないでいけると思うよ進むの恋愛観ってすごいねそうかなキコちゃんが言うならそうかもしれないね Then, just then, Mom came outside and placed a pot of tea nearby. And was I insensitive? I should have been the one to do that. In that sense, Mom would, be, would have to be more of an expert than me in these matters. Of course, she was. She married Dad and had a daughter who ended up going down the wrong path, at least. At that, she made it this far, amassing plenty of experience from what points in life. I need more feminine experience, experiences in my life, too. <laughs> 何わわた私がさそのこここ恋の勉強のためにあのそのごめんねなんでもないよ。はい。I want to be the perfect wife when I grow up, Tsubakiko. That was the first dream I'd ever had. If I ever stuck to those feelings and lived an honest life, how wonderful a woman would I be by now? I threw myself onto the bed and went over my life. How did I go down the wrong path? I got into fights with boys all the time, and being the dumb kid I was, I thought, I thought it made me cool. Damn it. I wish I could turn back time and do it all over again. It's not gonna. Okay. I started to focus on my childhood days. I remember them so well. Sus Susida was a lot different back then, wasn't it? I don't feel like there used to be so many houses. There used to be a lot of fields, but those were gradually replaced by houses and parking lots. I love going to the local park. There were always people I knew playing there. We'd have fun playing on the slide in the sandbox. I never even once thought about fighting or anything. Back then, I honestly believed there were three kinds of people family, friends, and future friends. I remember what it felt like, but not all the details. But that was good enough for me. If only I could return back to when there were infinite possibilities laid out before me. The slide was fun no matter how many times I went down it. I loved making mountains of sand and digging holes. The deeper you dug, the cooler the sand got. Whenever I got thirsty, I would run over the water fountain and rudely gulp the water straight out of the faucet. My friend's mother would be sitting on the benches, smiling and waving at us. We couldn't get along with anyone here and make friends with them easily, even if we'd only just met or didn't even know their names. Everyone was nice, there was even this older man who would buy drinks for the kids. There was something strange on the bench near the swing. What the fuck? I thought I was done with this shit. It was sitting, no, it was bulging on said bench. Why did you return? Why, why, why? It was a giant flabby lump of flesh, a blob. I couldn't really explain it. It was like an obese man's stomach had become a giant mass of meat. 
Something like hair was strewn between the trolls of fat, reminding me of my father when we took baths together. I thought nothing of it with my father, but with other people, it looked it really disgusted me. But that impression was only in hindsight. Back then, I doubt it bothered me. After all, all the kids would gather around him with beaming, beaming smiles when he brought ice cream out of a shopping bag and called over. And I was no different. Oh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. um, can't you? I don't know. Oh, I don't like that. Everyone was crazy for the blog giving away ice cream for free. I was the same. I didn't get to have ice cream much because of my parents said it'd give me stomach aches. Just then the blog reached out his hand as it spoke to me. Nowadays, I would have found that repulsive, but the young me had no such reservations. A slimy arm shaped lump emerged from the blob and shrugged my cheek. A gooey, sticky thread covered in sweat hung between me and between my cheek and the blob. Oh no, stop it, it's so gross! Yet the young me was happy and gross with the blob that always gave me free treats. My chest was growing tighter and tighter, it was a struggle to breathe. It was the stench, that re the reek of a rotten stomach, the rank smell of acidic sweat, and gasps for air. But all I could do was keep watching that scene from an outside perspective, like on a TV show. Just then, the giant blob's eyes met mine. I slowly left the bench with a creeping sound, and made its way through the chamber and near the... Uh, I really don't like that sound. It made its way through the children and now they stuffed in their faces with ice cream and approached me. I was frozen in place, all I could do was watch as I bring the look toward me. You know, the young me just kept licking her popsicle. In a moment, the blob opened its giant mouth as though it were going to eat me alive, which enveloped everything hidden within. Its pungent breath putrid as a balloon sewer, its tongue covered in warts like a sea cucumber, grimy teeth flecked with yellow spots. I was going, it was going to swallow me. No, 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 no. All of a sudden, the world filled with radiant light. The foul blob writhed in pain upon its rival. It groaned as a slow of I was saved. Just then, my savior appeared within the warm light. Daijoube. Shikari. Suzuma? Suzuma. Suzuma emerged from the brilliant light. It saved me. <laughs> what should? But what is it? The actual Suzumi, or is it that one thing that I was faking being a Suzumi? Daijoubu da yo. Mo nani mo kouku nai yo. Kouai no wa. I cried in Susan's arms for a while. Gradually, I calmed down and realized I've been having a nightmare. Iana Yume, that's a midnight, eh? あたし、夢見の悪い方みたいで、ぼんやりしてる時とかにもよく気持ち悪い夢を見たりするの。最近はそれほどでもなかったんだけど、久しぶりにとくもり級のを見た気がする。ああ、I Oh, what the fuck? Dreams are always so clear when you're having them. Yet when I tried to recall the details, I found they have faded from my brain like milk is not. So she forgot about that. Huh. Oh. 
覚えてて楽しいものじゃないならそれが一番じゃないかなそうだね What happened to me? Alright, I laid down in bed during a fit of self loathing. I plan on getting back up soon, but it seemed to have dozed off. I'm glad she's not woken me, woken me up. I would have felt like a total mess in the morning if I fell asleep in the clothes. Wait. What happened? Suzumu, why are you in my room? Did you just realize that? Yes. I was sleeping, but. キコちゃんの部屋から叫び声が聞こえてうちのアパート壁が薄いしねノックしたんだけど気づいてくれなくておじさんたちの部屋もノックしたんだけどこっちもダメでひょっとしたら窓の鍵が開いてるかなって思ってあごめんね<笑>開いてた時間メンツでワンダーおかげでキコちゃんを起こしてあげることができたんださすがに僕も寝巻きじゃ失礼だと思ったんでちゃんと着替えてきたんだなにも見たよね私の部屋うん股間さんは一つすごいねどれだけの人たちすずむ
の望むような女の子にはまだ程遠いけど悪いところは直すし進むが気に入るようにいっぱい頑張るからそれは僕も同じだよ今の僕じゃ仮にキコちゃんと結婚したとしても幸せにできる自信なんてないよだから<笑>だから二人で一緒に勉強していこうそれどういう意味さすがにキコちゃんを僕のお嫁さんにするなんて約束はまだできないよだって僕はまだ未熟だからキコちゃんを幸せにできる自信がないでもそれはキコちゃんも同じでしょだったら2人が互いを幸せにできるかどうか試してそして学び合わなきゃその上で2人が結婚に値するという結論に至ったならそれでいいんじゃないかなよくわかんない私バカだから進むが何を言ってるのかわかんないごめんね僕も実は何を言ってるのかちょっとわかんなくなってる I would have to discover as soon as she's were done with the rare red tinge. I was the one who went all crazy, so he was trying to play it cool for me. But I could tell he was just as nervous. That made me happy. I wouldn't be fair to ask him more from him. I sat up straight and bowed my head to Susan. I Susan said, like me, I repeated my actions. Boku Koso. Boku Akito. Kiko Chan Gakitai Sirodono di Panao Tokosanai. Dakara. Wari Tokoro Gatta and Nelsi. E Tokoro Gatta and Nobastai. Soreo Tashkame I. Nelsi I. Sono Wede Mada. Boku Gakiko Chan no Mukosan Ni Sawashi to Motte Kretanara. その時お互いを運命に委ねよう<笑>なんでそんなに落ち着いてるのひょっとして告白されたこと結構あるそんなわけないよほら手のひらはびっしょりだよ She was sure to me his palms which I took into my own They were warm, and I could tell his heart was beating as fast as mine. Boku no nayami nanda yo. Kinchou shita ri asetta ri shite temo, dae mo shinjite kure nai nda. Onna no koto o tsukiai nanka shita koto ga nai kara, dou sereba ii ka wakara nai kedo. Kouan shin mesarei. なんだろうそのえっとうんが頑張ろうえいえいおう<笑> You both laughed Never knew the moonlight shining through the curtains could be so gentle. Illuminated the tinges on our cheeks, revealing a growing embarrassment. 
The pounding in my chest was so great that I could barely take any more. If we sealed this night with a kiss like Roma's, all our hearts would explode, no doubt about it. So we simply said goodnight to each other, and Susan would return to the fuck. What was it? What did it say? Hold on. As soon as I got nice, as soon as we returned to it, oh, just returned to his room. Okay. His door was locked, so he said he'd go back through the window. And then a series of romantic events on that note was so silly I couldn't help but laugh. I was Shibakiko Harumiya, a junior in high school. And I finally found myself living a normal adolescent life. And so we have discovered the secret of Kiko. And the fact that she was, well, do this. I'll have the music going still. The fact that she was a bot, a delinquent bot, sort of delinquent bots. But I wasn't expecting to see the blob return. <laughs> that oh my god, I thought I was done with this shit. Oh, the sounds were so disturbing. Oh. I, just, I did not. I don't like that blob at all. No, I don't think anyone likes it. And I was no different. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this this episode of Iwai Hime. If you did, subscribe and hit the bell so you know so you know if I do, whenever I do a new vi video for for Iwai Hime as well as other videos. And anyway, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.